My name is Pastor Peter Kesting, and it's my privilege to be with you here today to at least digitally share with you God's message as it comes to us from in this Lenten season as we're looking at this series about the Son of God goes forth to war. We see that sometimes even in, um, in no matter what war you have, there's always traitors. There's always uh, the people who mutiny, the people who desert the army. Um, Jesus, in his battle against the devil and those evil forces, there was no exception to him either. There were many in his own camp who betrayed him. And we see that in our lessons for today. We'll begin with our, our service. As the people of God, we gather this evening in his name. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. And we'll now sing our first hymn, hymn 595. are open and from whom no secrets are hidden. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, listen to my cry for mercy, and in your faithfulness come to my relief. Do not bring your servant into judgment, for no one living is righteous before you. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me. For I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and repentant sinner, confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart, I have not loved others as I should. I am distressed by the sins that trouble me and am deeply sorry for them. Our God, who is rich in mercy, sent Jesus to pay our debt of sin to wash us clean in his blood, and to declare us not guilty. 
In Christ all your sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the victory over Satan, sin, and death, and making us your own redeemed people. Amen. And we now join together in the responsive reading of our Savior's Passion. As we see as uh, Jesus gets closer and closer to the cross. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders in the, of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the kind of death he was going to die, would happen. We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, He stirs up the people of Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some miracles. Herod asked him many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we'll now sing our next hymn, hymn 127.
Our sermon text for our, our message today comes to us from John's Gospel, from the 6th chapter, verses 66 to 68. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, fellow redeemed in Jesus, our warrior and our hero. Every day in this country, there are many people who, many mar married couples who get divorced. Before that divorce, though, there was a day when they stood together, when they were happy, when they loved each other deeply, when they made promises to love and to support each other in the good times and the bad, in sickness and in health and in all things. How many broken promises does it take to destroy a marriage? How much emotional or physical abuse, how much struggling with alcoholism, with drugs, before a marriage dissolves? What does it take to get a marriage to go from wow to ugh? It's not an easy question to answer, is it? But you know, there is in many ways we see a parallel here to that kind of relationship that goes from wow to ugh, from joy together and happiness to divorce. We see a parallel with that in our text for today with Jesus and his disciples. When their uh, relationship began, when Jesus began his ministry, there was a sense of wow. But here in John chapter 6, we see a resounding ugh from many of his followers as they reject Jesus, the warrior. And he is rejected by his own. How did it get that way? Well, let's look at the context here. John chapter 6, the context is him feeding the 5,000. One of the greatest miracles that, that Jesus did, and what an impressive miracle that would have been, right? Right? He fed all those people, 5,000 men, not including the women and children. This is a, a large gathering here. And they were fed by just a few things. Amazing miracle. Well, we're told in Scripture that the people wanted to make Jesus king by force. Essentially, they saw in Jesus, I guess what's been called a bread king. You know, they saw that if they made Jesus their king, they would all have unlimited food. And they would never have to work for it again. They had to have as much food as they want for free. And we can assume that they had also seen some of the other miracles that he had done of, of healing others. So they thought, well, here we've got Jesus. He's going to give us free food and free health care. You know, what more could we want? You know, how many politicians could really fail with that kind of offer of unlimited food and free health care? Well, Jesus didn't have to run. In fact, he didn't want to run. But they were going to make him king by force. But he, he distances himself. But it's the next day when the crowds come to him that he, he talks to them again. And he tells them about bread. But, you know, not the kind of bread they were looking for. Not the kind of bread that they ate yesterday. Jesus 
kind of dropped a bombshell on them when he told them earlier in chapter 6, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus told them that he was the bread from heaven. And he goes on further to tell them that they cannot go to heaven unless they eat his flesh and drink his blood. Basically, he was telling them, you're going to have to take me in by faith if you want to be saved. But the words that Jesus said, it offended them. It confused them. It made them angry. Many of them left. And, you know, we're told it wasn't just this large crowd of 5,000 plus that left him, the people that, you know, hardly knew him. Instead, we're actually told that it was some of his closer disciples. It says here in our text, on hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? And right after that, it says, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Why? Why? Well, I think in many ways, some of them didn't believe his claims. That, that if they took him in by faith, that he would give them eternal life. You know, it's one thing to give someone food and drink here on this earth, but to give them eternal life, to forgive their sins, that's a whole other level, right? But I, I think there was an even deeper problem here. The devil who's really fighting this battle against Jesus, had in many ways had already corrupted the hearts and the minds of the people by using their leaders to teach them that they didn't really need this bread from heaven. They did not need the forgiveness of sins. Their teachers had taught them that the law, the Ten Commandments, was the way to heaven. If they just kept those commandments and did what was required of them, and they tried to make it as easily as possible, then you could go to heaven. And you didn't really need a Savior or salvation. You could save yourself. So when Jesus offered himself as the bread from heaven, this was too hard of a teaching. And people walked away. What about today? What about in this world that we are are living in now? Well, certainly, if we look at how the devil has attacked this world um, in the religious atmosphere, the religious sphere of this world, we can see that he's done that in many ways. And that's not just recently, but for, for... Many, many years, the devil has attacked religion and God in this world. We've heard about the rise of the nuns. It's not talking about the Catholic women. But the nuns are people who, when they're asked what religion they are, they say, well, I'm none. And that number of people who have said that they have no religious background has increased. Same thing with the duns. The Duns are the people who had a religious follow or had a religion, but then they left that and they're done and they have no intention of ever going back. Both those groups have really increased in this country today. And now we think too about what's going on in the world and how it's how it's being shaken to its very core. We're yet to wait to see what is going to happen from this. I think in some ways this will be a a way of waking people up and calling them back to the faith. It is my honest prayer and hope that many will see this as a a wake-up call and realize that we need God to get us through this and and to help us, that we cannot rely on ourselves. We need to rely on God. And I think we will see that. But don't kid yourself. The devil is going to try his very hardest to use this coronavirus pandemic as a way to cast doubts in people's hearts. 
You know, if God really cared about this world so much, why would he allow it to happen? The devil will say. He will try to use this as a way to drive people away from God. To see God as, a, as someone who is loveless and does not care about his people. And maybe there will be many who fall away, who distance themselves, who will be like the disciples here in our text, who hear this difficult thing, who are experiencing a difficult time right now, and when they have that experience, they will turn around and walk away. But of course, as I said before, that will not happen to everyone, will it? What, is, what happens to Peter? Well, you know, in our text here, it's really a very powerful section of God's Word. When Jesus saw all these disciples leave him, you could just almost feel the, the hurt and the pain in his heart. And then he turns to his closer disciples, the twelve, the intimate few, he turns to them and he asks them, you do not want to leave too, do you? And you can almost just see the hurt in his eyes when he says that. Now, we don't have all the details recorded. You know, we don't know if the disciples hesitated to answer we don't know if they were waiting to see if, if other people were going to leave or if they were going to be the only ones left. But all we do have is Peter's response. Peter here in our text says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Now there are times when Peter really drops the ball. There are times when Peter just goes out and impulsively says or does something rash or ignorant, says the wrong thing, does the wrong thing. There are many times that Peter blundered. But boy, right here, you got to love Peter. Because he says the right thing. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where else can we go? Now, he mentions the words of eternal life. The power is in the word, is what we see from this text here. Think about the word throughout Scripture. Look back at creation. How did God create this world? Well, he, he just spoke. And boom. Where there had been nothing before, all of a sudden, there was a universe. There were grass, and there was plants, and there were monkeys, and there was everything. Just like that, at the power of his word, those things came to be. And the same is true now for God's own love story towards us, his word. In scripture, it tells us that faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of about Christ. It's the Word that brings faith in people's hearts. I do not know how many Christians are in this world. It's certainly a large number. Not large enough, of course, but still a large number. And I can tell you, though, even though I don't know the number, I can tell you that every single one of those Christians became a Christian not because of their choice, not because of their own will. Their faith was not their own work. But instead, it was a gift from God. As the Holy Spirit worked faith in that person's heart, and how did he do that? Well, faith comes from hearing the message. It's through the Word. Here we see the answer to that question. How can a relationship that is at UG, go back to wow. You know, we, we don't know the exact answer. I mean, there's a lot of problems in, in how our relationship with our Lord and Savior can go from wow to UG. 
And maybe, you know, we look at all those problems in our lives. We can even look at the current problem that's facing the world. Maybe for many that will make that relationship sour. But how does it go from ug back to wow? You have to look at the words of Peter. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. If Jesus were to ask us that question, if Jesus were to ask the, Christ, the, the Christian church today that very question that he asked his disciples, if Jesus were to ask us today, you do not want to leave too, do you? May our answer always be the answer that Peter gave. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. Now may the peace of God which transcends all hearts and minds be with you all. Amen. <clears throat> and we pray. Our Father in heaven, may your name be holy among us in all we say and do. Lord of all, may your kingdom come into the hearts and lives of all people. Let nothing prevent your will from being done here on earth. Father, provide us with what you know we need each and every day. Savior, during these days of Lent, we are reminded how much you long to forgive us even to the point of sacrificing yourself for us. Lead us now to forgive all those who sin against us. Lord, you face many temptations while here on earth. Help us to remain faithful to you and stand strong against the evil lies of the enemy. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we now join together in Martin Luther's evening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. Forgive me all my sins, and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.